Uh, good morning, everyone. Dark Nomad here, once again. Going for me and Harry is going for our usual morning walk. And not surprisingly enough, but pleasantly enough, the weather has taken a, I won't say a drastic change, but it's much, much better. Um, actually able to sleep with the windows open all night long because we don't have that chilly air blowing in all night, making you have to wrap up and quilt some blankets. And it's not chilly in the morning. It's actually... I'm actually out here a little bit earlier than I usually am because I didn't really have to wait for the sun to warm things up, though the sun is up. Um, it's really quite pleasant, which tells me <laughs> it's probably going to be a little bit warmer than is going to make me happy. Yeah, I have people that will tell me, or that always tell me, that... I can't seem to be happy with the weather, no matter how it is. And I guess to an extent, that is very, very true. I, I absolutely despise cold weather. Um, it's one of the reasons I decided to take up this way of living and come to the desert Southwest. But at the same time, there's only so much heat you can take. Only so much heat. And you have to come to higher elevation this time of year because if you don't, you will roast. I've been keeping track of the weather and my usual digs like a quartzite. Um, Yuma, Parker, not, no, not so much Lake Havasu because I don't go up there too much, but um, it is, uh, it's hot, <laughs> it is, mm, excuse me, it's ranging in the mid to high 90s um, every day, only going down to uh, the 70s at night, and we're approaching, um, I think, within the next couple of days. It's triple digits every day. So, my buddy Mike, I feel for your brother. Um, he uh, he ends up having to stay in that area through the summer, um, and he's got two dogs, Uno and uh, Sorsha, and. His biggest concern is making sure that the dogs are um, comfortable because it's hot. <laughs> it's freaking hot. He has a schoolie. Um, and I think the only real saving grace about his schoolie is that when he bought it, it was already painted and it was painted white. So you have a little bit of reflectivity of the sunlight, but it's not going to do a whole heck of a lot in heat like that. Um, so, I have to admit, I'm getting kind of uh, fidgety, um, for lack of a better term. Um, a little bit of wanderlust settling in. Um, I like it here because for the most part, it's peaceful, it's quiet, and I don't have to deal with um, any of the craziness for the most part. I mean, there's been a couple of ATVs through here, but nothing like it is in um, some of the more desert-like sandier areas. Um, definitely not like it is down south. Um, I mean, even Flagstaff, it's, it, it's pretty bad in Flagstaff and the surrounding areas with the uh, with the ATVs, not in the city central itself, but the surrounding areas is all natural forest and they are absolutely ridiculous with the ATVs. But um, 
I just feel the need to move. I want to travel. I love the way I feel when I'm on the road. Um, and unfortunately, it's not an easy thing to do these days with the price of gas, um, especially in that in that rig of mine. Um, oh, damn flies. That's another thing that's driving me crazy. The flies are really beginning to become incessant out here. And they don't want to take no or they don't want to take a swat for an answer. You can swing and swing and swing and swat. And they just keep coming back for more. They just don't care. They are absolutely bound and determined to land on you. And in some cases, bite you. Harry, where are you going? Look at this guy. Where are you going? What are you doing? I, I don't get that guy sometimes. Let me adjust this camera. Um, yeah, we'll take a little bit of walk. A little bit of a walk down here. Stretch your legs out a little bit more. Um... But yeah, these flies, they're, they're just, I, I see people that go uh, camping in and around bodies of water and having done what I did for so many years as a game warden, spending a great deal of time on the water. I know that if you're gonna be by the water, you're gonna be dealing with insects and not my favorite thing. I don't like getting bit. I don't like getting stung. I just don't like them crawling all over me, flying up my nose and in my ears. Uh, so I try to stay away from it. I've tried to stay away from it if I can possibly help it. And I've done good so far, but for some reason, these forests seem to be um, a little more active with insects than one would think because there's no there's, there's really no water out here there's no standing water so you don't really have to worry about mosquitoes it's so the humidity is so low and it's so dry out here that I mean there isn't really a breeding ground for the kind of insects that multiply around bodies of water so I, I don't know where they're coming from. I just know that they drive me crazy. Um, there's a part of me that longs to be back in flat desert area. And um, I don't know what it is about that type of environment. I mean, it's nice in the forest, but it makes my life a little difficult because um, it's take this location for instance you have a lot of open field on both sides of the road but you can't really park there because um, because of forestry um, activity there are a lot of tree stumps in those clear areas you can't see a lot of them because of the grass, but believe me, there's a lot of tree stumps. And in some instances, some rather large rocks and or boulders. So what are you gonna do? Um, you find, if you do find a clearing, then you tend to have issues with, um, with, long, with, with large trees shading you and it absolutely kills my solar. Um, I have turned a lot of stuff off and done without um, doing a lot of stuff because I really don't have the power to spare. I mean, I about killed my batteries one night um, or one during a series of days because of a uh, lack of sunlight because it was so cloudy. I've kind of did a reversal on that, managed my power a little bit better. So I uh, stopped eating the grass, Harry. 
so I don't have to um, I don't have to worry I've been pretty much at a full charge even overnight I was a hundred percent all night even though I was uh, my uh, refrigerator which seems to want to draw a lot of power was doing its usual thing Harry get out of the mud come come Yeah, I said mud. This is a, uh, let me show you this. You see that, I guess you can just barely see that fence right there. And um, you see that little gully or a little trench, or I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what you would call it, but it, it looks like a, it looks like a crater, but it's a small pond over there. And from what I understand, um, or from what I know, they allow cattle to graze up there, up here. And that's one of the locations where they, uh, where they water themselves because there is an, um, that's about all they have up here, small ponds and maybe a lake. Um, but I don't know of any real running water to speak of up here. Even where we go get water, which we did the other day down at the uh, campground, um, by Jacob Lake, they um, they uh, they truck their water in daily. The guy says they truck in probably um, five, six to a thousand gallons of water per day to take care of the needs of the people that are camping down there in the campground. I think I'm gonna turn around and start heading back. But um, yeah, there's there's no water up here, <laughs> nothing to speak of. Um, this area Kaibab is, is situated on a plateau and if you go due east or due west out of here the elevation drops significantly I'm talking like five five minutes no, not six but about five thousand feet um, the elevation will drop I believe but it's um and it's and it's it's true it's true desert i mean it's just scrub brush and sand and and rocks i mean you could see it from if you watch my video um coming out here you can look to the right as i was driving down a road and see the uh the cliff faces uh the vermilion cliffs and marble canyon and it is uh it's true desert it's dry as a bone out there. There's no water. Now, if you go about another 20 miles due west, you do have, oh my God, that's not the Colorado. Or is it? It may be. It may be a part of the Colorado, but there's a river. There's a river canyon. You come across the bridge. Um, probably couldn't see it very well from the way I had the camera positioned. Which is another thing, um, when we do this travel videos from now on, I've mounted some, uh, I've placed some GoPro mounts on the roof of my truck and one at the very front of the hood on the, uh, at the, uh, on the, gr on the top of the grill. So I'll be able to mount my camera there and you'll be able to get an uninterrupted view of the road and what we're seeing without having it framed in by, you know, the windshield and the inside of the uh, truck. So it'll be a lot better view. Um, just hopefully we won't be constantly running into bugs, getting spattered all over the uh, lens. My God, these flies. Um, I was saying a little, little bit earlier, I, I'm, I'm, there's a part of me that wants to move, but I'm not quite sure where I want to move. Um, I think I mentioned, um, well, I know I mentioned that I've been doing a carnivore diet. I think I've lost so far, I don't have a scale, so I haven't been able to weigh myself. And when you're trying to lose weight, they say you shouldn't constantly weigh yourself anyway. So, I'd say it's much better to go by how your clothes are fitting and things of that nature. Well, I can tell you, I've tightened my, uh, I've had to drill holes and tighten my belt to the tune of about two and a half, three inches so far. So I've definitely lost some uh, body fat 
and I've lost a little bit of girth around my waist. And I think um, that going on the fast is really gonna jumpstart me into uh, ketosis and, and better and faster weight loss. So there was a time in my life where I did a fast, a lengthy extended fast, and I did it for about 45 days. And I lost, I think, my gosh, I think I lost 40 pounds. Um, but I have since found out a lot of things about what you need to do when you come off an extended fast, which I didn't know at the time. So I think my long-term results this time around will be better. I'm not planning on doing 45 days again. Um, thinking more along the line of two weeks to begin with to see how it works out. I know I can manage that. And um, we'll see how it goes. Um, have to make sure that I'm close to um, an area of population with a Walmart because I may very well or very likely need to go buy a couple of new pairs of pants because the ones I'm wearing now, if I don't cinch my belt up pretty tight, they will absolutely fall around from around my waist to the ground. So I am feeling much better. And hopefully by this time next year, I'll be feeling even better and looking a whole hell of a lot better. But at the end of the day, it's not about looks, it's about health and longevity. And that is what I am absolutely after. I want to live longer, I want to live healthier. And I don't want to live life in pain, which is what I spent a great deal of my life in. Pain from inflammation, from the foods that I eat, and poor choices I make in lifestyle or have made in lifestyle. Um, carnivore out here can be a little difficult. I have a, uh, I have a, uh, a ninja. Um, it's not a traditional type air fryer like everyone uses these days with the slide out drawer. It's, it looks more like a toaster oven, but, and that's what it does. It does a toaster oven, um, convection oven, air fryer, but it doesn't have a lot of room and height. So there's not a lot that I can do with it. Um, when it comes to making dishes that are a little taller, um, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to clean because it's really not a traditional oven or even air fryer for that matter. And it's just not a lot of room inside of the thing. So I think one of the things I really want to do is look into uh, swapping that out for a more traditional air fryer um, and also getting a um, slow cooker or just go buy. I mean, I had used to have an Instapot out here and it kind of screwed the pooch on me. Wasn't sealing anymore, so I got rid of it. And you can use a uh, Instapot as both a slow cooker and a uh, pressure cooker. So I think I'm gonna be in the market here shortly for a new Instapot. Um, like I said, carnivore out here can be a little difficult. Um, there's a lot of things that I could probably use that I would have to order because a lot of stores don't carry it. And I just can't get it because I'm not in a location where I can get mail. So um, that's, a, that's a bit of a chore. Um, outside of a big city, you don't have a lot of choices as far as shopping are concerned. Um, so you're kind of stuck with Walmart, which isn't my favorite place to shop. 
especially for beef because the quality I don't think is very good but I've been eating a tremendous amount of hamburger I mean um, there was a there was a, a time when I first got here um, just before I got here we went shopping in Flagstaff at Walmart and I bought um, 15 pounds of hamburger and split it up into one pound um, portions and I was doing a pound of hamburger a day and I think for a well I know for 10 days straight it was either hamburger patties or some type of a ground beef concoction and it does get old but if you cook it right and season it right um, it's I don't it's more than tolerable I'll say but it was really nice if I could find some decent steaks and I find you don't really find decent steaks at Walmart and if you do happen to run into one you're gonna pay for it I did get lucky about a month or so ago I think when we we're still in Flagstaff um, I got a hold of a couple of uh, steaks and they were absolutely and they were on sale because they were just um, they were just about to expire and they were very thick steaks too and um, when I got them I froze them and then I thawed them out and they were just oh my god they were um couple of the most tender steaks I've had in quite a while. Um, I'm trying to stick mostly to beef and um, eggs and butter. And I'm about to run out of bacon again. So I think I'm not going to be doing any bacon for a while or as much bacon. Not so much because of the nitrates. My biggest problem with bacon is trying to find bacon that doesn't have sugar added to it. Seems to be one of the ingredients that they're wanting to put in bacon for some reason. I don't get it. But um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be beef and butter and um, eggs for the uh, foreseeable future once I uh, come off of my fast. I'm gonna have to try to find some soup bones so I can make some bone broth as well, or just find some uh, packaged bone broth to uh, break my fast once I start that up in a couple of weeks or a week or so. So that's what's been going on with me and what's gonna be going on with me. I don't know, I think in another week or so, we're gonna be breaking camp and moving. We're thinking about moving up into Utah, um, location called Dixie National Forest. And I'm kind of looking forward to that, but not in a way because all the reviews I've read at a location said there's a lot of ATV traffic and you know how I feel about ATVs. Um, so we'll see. If, if it becomes too too much of a thing, then I'll start my circuitous route that I planned on doing and start heading um, um, southeastern Utah and then south back into uh, back into Arizona. Maybe visit Page and for a while. Maybe run over to Lake Mead and stay there for a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see. A lot of places to go out here. A lot of places to go. But um, I want to call it for now. And I will see you guys next time around. Please don't forget to like the video. Give me a thumbs up. Share my video with others. And please subscribe. So until next time, this is Harry Houdini. Hey, Harry. Hey, Harry. And Dark Nomad. And we are out of here.